Well, I'm Cathy Ross. I'm Honorary Research Fellow at the Museum of London. I've been part of the steering group, so I was on the workshops in Barcelona and London. I couldn't come to the Cologne one, which I was very sorry to miss, uh, but the Bar Barcelona and London ones were fantastic and I find it really valuable. Well, I think cities are about people, which is a truism that, that, we, that we all know. And of course, people are about the senses and, you know, as we constantly say in the workshops, how you experience the city is, is a very sort of sensory thing. But I think it's particularly important, and where these workshops have been so useful, um, not to sort of take the senses for granted. I think that's the real problem that you, you know, certainly in museums, when you think you want to understand something, you begin by you know, going back to history and understanding it in a sort of intellectual way. But to actually understand the, the feel, the look, the character of a city, you've got to take account of the sensory experience of actually experiencing, you know, the streets, the buildings, the other people around you, the smells, the sights, all of those things. So, um, as I say, it's something you can take for granted much too easily. So it's very important to focus on them now and again and remind yourselves that the senses are important. I think for me the most interesting insight was how much I personally was actually editing out um, because on some of the exercises, I particularly think of the one in the Whitechapel Road where you had to stand and just think of what you can smell, what you can hear and it, you realise what a rich layered experience this is and the smells, are, you know, must be about 20 different smells once you actually focus on them and of course in day to day you just tend to sort of you know, you, 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 you know, it's a characteristic of being in a city, you sort of edit things out. And once you've walked down that street twice, you then almost sometimes can walk down the street without even seeing it, let alone sort of smelling. So I think just stopping and, and realising how very multi-layered and how complex uh, the sensory experience of the city is, has been very valuable. And the other thing I, I found particularly valuable is actually linking that complexity to more academic thinking about you know analyzing things like power relationships which again we talked about a lot that some smells you know c trigger off things that 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 are that are sort of intellectual understandings that this smell belongs to this group of people and this smell belongs to another group of people so having that sort of link between experiencing and realizing what a deep experience it is and then linking it to a more sort of um reserved sort of less personal sort of analysis of what that means I think has been really useful. I think for me it's, it's thinking about the senses if you like as part of the subject of, of the curation as opposed to part of the interpretation which um, I think in museums we've done a lot of um, interpreting things in museum displays through the senses for special groups like for sort of visually impaired or for children you think oh let's have a touchy feely thing let's have an audio thing and this will help you know these specific groups so it's almost like a method of interpreting a subject but um, the change for me is then is thinking about the senses themselves as the subject and it's not that museums haven't done that in the past but I think they've tended not to you know the senses have been used as a as a vehicle for saying other things rather than as focusing on the senses and sensory experience in its own right. I'm Gillian Rose, I'm a Professor of Cultural Geography at the Open University. Uh, I think the city uh, is a massively sensory kind of environment. Uh, a lot of the ways in which we engage with the city uh, are through our senses, uh, the five that we're familiar with, but lots of other ways as well, kind of temperature, senses of flow, rhythm, uh, volume and so on. Uh, so I think if you're not thinking about the city as a sensory space, you're, you're not really getting to what the uh, urban environment is in, in its essence. Uh, and methods are really important for accessing uh, those kind of sensory, uh, sensory elements. Uh, I think the most interesting insight I, I got from the network of the conference was actually just how difficult the senses are to deal with, in fact. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm used to thinking about uh, seeing, um, but really that, that's the visual sense, but that's really been through looking at, um, at representations, at images. I think when we're thinking about actually seeing in terms of an embodied experience, 
becomes very difficult to access uh, and people react very differently to what seems to be the same sensory stimuli for a whole series of reasons, kind of individual reasons, um, cultural, social, uh, political kind of differences. So understanding uh, the senses becomes a really challenging, challenging kind of project. Well, I've got a long-standing interest in, in things visual, say imagery, representations and so on. The thing that I've taken away from, uh, from being involved in this project is that uh, the visual, I think, remains important, but it needs to be specified much more carefully. And it can also be changed depending on the other senses uh, in which a particular visual experience is embedded. And I'm getting particularly interested actually in sound as well. Um, the soundtracks that accompany lots of uh, kind of moving images, but also ambient sound and how that can really affect the, your, your visual perceptions as well. From an architect's point of view, um, the senses matter because um, we try to design for users and users have very specific uh, sensory experiences. Um, so we need to kind of include um, the senses into um, any kind of um, discussion about the quality of the environment, the quality of the spaces we're living in or we're using in everyday life. Now the most surprising aspect of the whole project was uh, how well people from different disciplines can work together and I'm really kind of looking forward, the one thing that I'm really taking with me is how we should do that more often, we should meet from different disciplines and sit on the same side of the table and just uh, very openly discuss our methods, discuss the way we think, we see things and just try to kind of work this out, find a solution. First of all, this kind of, um, the, the aspect of the active workshop, I really loved that and it was something that existed already in my research but now I really got much more ideas about how to enrich it, how to embellish it and how to kind of uh, extend uh, the uh, public engagement aspect of it. So it was, it was very, very useful. The senses matter for understanding the city because they're probably the most direct way that we understand the city. That's, that's our first encounter with it. Um, it's a way to encounter the city th simultaneously um, and it's at the same time where we start to filter things out, right? Uh, so that process uh, translates immediately into the city's built environment and immediately into, immediately into the social environment as well. Um, what we choose to focus on, what we choose to let in, what we choose to exclude is the basic and kind of fundamental question of the city, of, of, of what is the city. So, so the senses are, again, they're a very, very direct way uh, to understand how this happens and I think it's also important because we don't understand them very well. Um, I think the senses are such a subjective field that are so, um, that there's so much left to map out about them that it's a really, really wide field uh, of study right now that um, will probably provide a lot of insight into why our cities are the way they are. The most surprising thing about the research that we did in, this, in the framework of this project, I would have to say everything because we had never really taken a sensory approach to, to, to the city, not consciously or not specifically in, in focusing on these elements. So, so we were surprised on the one hand by how, by how much, um, by how much of our understanding of the city, even when it's expressed in very abstract terms, uh, how much that can rely on or privilege one sense at the expense of the others. So for instance, um, when we want our public spaces uh, to be you know, nice places, uh, productive places, or, or places of rest, and you know, places where society happens, uh, or places where society is reproduced or maintained, um, you know, our normative evaluations of that or our, our value judgments of it, of these aspects, um, you know, they seem to us just kind of natural, but, but they're actually, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, how clean it looks to us, you know, whether or not it's actually hygienic, which hygienic is actually, you know, something that's a multisensorial, uh, a multisensorial phenomenon of, in and of itself, right? So all of these things end up having to do with with, with value judgments that we make based on different perceptions that we're not always aware of the, the 
robustness of the information that we're using to arrive at those value judgments, and the senses give us kind of a metric through which to understand that robustness. So, so I think that's one thing that surprised me was, was precisely how the senses can help us map out what we, what we think we know, but what we don't know. And my, my work for the, CCC, for the CCCB is not, uh, is not as a curator, uh, although curation is a major part of the CCCB's work. Um, I, I coordinate projects and, and these, and I come at, I come at um, kind of our debates and, and, and all of this from, a, from my sociological background. Um, and I think this project, what it helped inform was, on the one hand, um, you know, it makes you think about a lot of the experience that we take for granted because at the CCCB, for instance, we have uh, programs that are, that are designed specifically for people that are, for instance, impaired in, in some of their senses, for the blind, for people who, have, um, who are deaf, for instance, uh, people with Alzheimer's, um, you know, whose perceptions are, are, you know, um, are, are different than, than, than others. And so uh, thinking through these programs, for instance, the senses obviously is, a, is, a, is central. Um, on the other hand, uh, adopting a sensory approach to some of the questions that we have traditionally used about the city, I think it broadens the field of topics that we can address. And, um, and I think it allows us to deal with that broader frame of uh, uh, set of set of set of questions uh, in a lot more profundity. I think the senses matter because they give us uh, a better understanding of the lived experiences of everyday urban users, both in the past but also in the present day. And if you think about that in terms of the contemporary application of that information, we can start to understand where people go in the city, the durable spaces, the continuities, the places that matter to people. We start to think about those in, a little bit more in terms of the way that we plan and design our cities today. I think the most surprising thing was the complexity of the senses. So my training and background had always been to privilege the visual and through the kind of experts that were brought in, through smell, through sound, through touch and taste, I started to think about the city in a different way. So I think that was the, the kind of most exciting thing. But then it was also a big challenge because you then have to kind of deconstruct all this complexity and it gives you way more to think about than, than sitting in your comfort zone. So I think that's been both a, an exciting thing but also a kind of a longer term challenge to think about. Quite a lot of ways actually. I always used to think about um, emotion, attachment and place and I used to think about lived experience as a really broad category. Uh, doing this project the last two years has made me think much more about the fine-grained sensorial re reactions that build up into lived experiences. So now, for example, when I analyse data, I think a lot more about sensory reactions within that, within that analysis. But I've also thought quite differently about methods as well. Uh, I used to work quite a lot with documentary methods and try and read the senses or lived experiences through those. But being exposed to different methods from different disciplines, such as filmmaking or smell walks or whatever they might be, have made me think about how I can incorporate some of that to, to try and help me answer the kinds of research questions that have been stimulated by the project and by other projects I'm working on. Sensory methods are important uh, for understanding the city not least because so much of our knowledge about the city and our understanding of the city, how people move around, uh, how cities should be designed, are primarily visual. And, uh, but we know, you know that, that that's only one-fifth at least, you know, at, at the very least one-fifth one of experience. And there's a whole range of experience that isn't necessarily accounted for, yet cities bombard our senses. And, and you know, a large part of, kind of being in a city is responding to the various sensory stimuli around us. So we need methods that help us to kind of um, access people's experiences of the multi-sensory city. And we also need uh, multi-sensory methods as kind of tools for telling stories um, about the range of different experiences that people have in cities that, that open up uh, experiences that might not necessarily have been accessible to social science or to planners or to architects previously. 
Uh, it's really tough to say the, the, what was the most um, uh, um, uh, insightful insights that I got from the network, but I think, um, I think one of the things I found really striking was just the variability of interest in the senses to, to the complete kind of like, this isn't relevant to me, I don't know how to handle this, you know, um, um, I'm, I'm not interested, to actual kind of a real hunger and a kind of recognition of the fact that these may well be really important realms of experience to engage with. So I think you know, one of the insights was the kind of ranges of, of um, kind of literacy or interest in it, particularly amongst urban professionals. Um, one of the other things I found really striking, particularly in uh, relationship to London and Cologne, was the kind of relative homogeneity of a kind of northern European sensorium uh, in, 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 in particular types of streets and the ways in which um, you know, a street in London and a street in Cologne can in fact be compared to each other in ways that sort of our methodological nationalism might not always uh, make obvious. I think the Spanish street was different for a number of different reasons. Firstly because um, the urban professionals in Spain, in, in Barcelona, seemed a lot more interested into the kind of the, the potentials of thinking with the senses. But also the, the, the actual layout of the street, the design of the street was very different. It was kind of truer to an old medieval city. The warmth of the street uh, made a difference. And, and there was just a kind of different sort of culinary repertoire, a different sonic repertoire to the street. It, it felt like somewhere different, which also might speak to the relative differences between um, southern and northern Europe as well. I think one of the great things about the project has been uh, the, the kind of um, compulsion for us to speak to different audiences as part of the project. And that's always been an explicit part of the project, right? To, to speak to museum curators and to artists and to urban professionals. And that means that I'm not speaking to my normal audience of sociologists, anthropologists and uh, urbanists. Um, and you know, that forces me to think more concisely, to talk, um, <laughs> to to talk more clearly, <laughs> uh, for want of a clearer word, um, and and yeah, I think that's been a real advantage. It's 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 it's, it's been a push to communicate in, in clearer, more concise ways. The senses are very important in the built environment. They're very important to us as professionals because what we do actually elicits a response. The the, the sensory is a, a reaction almost to what we do. So for us, understanding the feeling generated by space and the feelings that clash between, for example, one development and, and the threshold to another one uh, is very important in trying to, to, to find good solutions to develop better design. I think the most interesting thing I would take away from being part of the network was this idea that the senses aren't just uh, our touch, our smell, it was this idea of the multisensorial environment, the multisensorial experience, and the idea that we need to work at developing a multisensorial consciousness. I think what might have changed or is evolving in, in the way we're approaching design at the moment is we are much more aware of the research that is going on. Um, as designers, we, we move at a very fast pace. We have to barely scratch the surface of some of the research work that is going on. And so I think what I would take away is the fact that we are really more interested in collaborating and finding opportunities of working with academia uh, to inform um, the design process and, and the decision making.